All right, so yesterday there was a Nintendo Direct and it was pretty, 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 pretty good. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Yeah, if you didn't know they announced the remake of Super Mario RPG, that's all the news you really need to know, at least in my opinion. I guess there's some other stuff that happened too. Let's talk about it. This is little Bobby here with 5.9 Gaming Direct and today we're gonna talk about the Nintendo Direct for June 2023. If you're brand new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, smash the like button if you're as excited as I am about Super Mario RPG getting a remake, and leave a comment if you're some sort of animal that's not excited about Super Mario RPG on what you are actually excited about. And if you don't like this video, leave a dislike and let us know in the comments what we can do better for next time. All right, so this Nintendo Direct kicked off with the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Hidden Treasure of Area Zero DLC details. We saw the teal mask, Looks like we're gonna be going to some sort of festival. I apologize if you hear fireworks, it's close to the 4th of July and apparently people need to light that off. So if you hear that in the background, pay no attention. But the first piece looks like it's gonna be some sort of summer mask festival. The teal mask, the titular teal mask is something that uh, probably has to do with the legendary Pokemon that looks like it wears a teal mask, but we'll find out when this DLC comes out. The second part is the Indigo disc and it looks like we're gonna be at a new academy and be in some sort of terrarium under water i think is what they said it looks like they're making a small little separate world for us to hunt down pokemon and have battles in it's really kind of cool looking it's like that old movie biodome if you happen to be old enough to remember that where there's separate biomes there's like a desert there's like a forest there's you know water and there's ice and it looks sizable but not that big obviously it's a dlc area so it's not going to be as big unlike Pokemon Sword and Shield where the last DLC area was enormous and it was the size of the wild area in the rest of the game, which was awesome. I think this one's gonna be scaled down because obviously Pokemon Scarlet and Violet already has a pretty big world, at least for a Pokemon game. There are also some events and a special code you can use to get a lot of rare materials in Pokemon. We'll put that up on the screen for you now. We'll have Renegade or James throw that up for you guys. So take from that what you will. Next up was Sonic Superstars, and this is one that I am super excited about. I love old school Sonic and you know i love some of the 3d ones too haven't played a ton of those but the old ones the 2d side scrolling sonic the hedgehogs that's what i grew up on i was a sega kid during the 90s right i had the original nintendo but then i had a genesis in the 90s and sonic was absolutely my jam so it's really cool to see this kind of traditional sonic formula being brought back and having the opportunity for a new generation to really get to experience a brand new Sonic side-scrolling adventure, especially one where you can alternate between all four characters, Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and Amy, all with different ways to play through the levels. And I think that's gonna give a lot of replayability. It's also gonna be having four player local co-op, which is really cool. So if you're someone who has friends who like Sonic, you guys can all sit down together, sit on the couch, grab a Joy-Con and go for it. It's gonna be out in fall 2023. Next up was Paleo, which looks like it's a free to play kind of MMO farming sim city builder kind of thing. It looks okay. Uh, looks very, very standard fare for this kind of uh, free to play MMO adventure style game. There's some, looks like hunting you can do. You can build up your city. You can trade, I guess. You can have fun with co-op. You can do it solo. You can fish. They showed all that. Uh, check this one out in the holidays. Again, it will be free to play. So if you're interested in this, make sure you put it on your, uh, your wish list, I guess. And after Paleo, we saw Persona 5 Tactica. This looks fantastic. The art style is chibi and that rubs some people the wrong way for whatever reason. However, Persona fans are definitely gonna wanna check this one out. It is another one made by Sega Atlas and it's gonna be coming out November 17th, 2023. Let me see Myth Force. This is one that I'm actually really kind of interested in checking out because I like rogues. That's just me. It's going to be a first person roguelike adventure and it's going to be done by Aspire. Uh, we've seen a couple of these before. Notably, the one that I can think of at the top of my head is Gunfire Reborn. So first person roguelites, I think are really fun. And if you're interested in this, this could definitely be one that you want to put on your radar. So make sure you look out because not only does Myth Force look like it's going to be a lot of fun, but the art style is incredible. They say it's built off of the idea of a Saturday morning cartoon. And I think that that absolutely looks like it, especially one from say the eighties and me being as old as I am, of course, those are the ones that I grew up with. So I'm definitely putting this one up on the top of my list as something to check out on the switch coming up here. Then we got to look at a new Splatoon Splatfest. If you're a fan of Splatoon 3, they always have events called Splatfest to go on. They had one for Tears of the Kingdom, I believe, right before that game launched. So these are all just kind of little seasonal events that they have and you can take part in. And I'm pretty sure you get rewards. I haven't really played too much Splatoon, 
but if you are a fan of that this is looking like it could be a lot of fun looks like it's going to be running july 14th through july 16th and there's going to be specific challenges that you can complete during that time for specific rewards check it out if you're a fan of splatoon 3 let us know how you like it then we see the return of detective pikachu which is pretty wild i didn't think this was going to be coming out for a while i mean it was rumored that detective pikachu was in the works uh, but now we're seeing that it's made a full-fledged return. It looks like we're having the same kind of traditional Detective Pikachu. He loves coffee. He solves mysteries. That's the whole shtick. Enjoy it. If you like the original Detective Pikachu, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this because it looks like it's just an improved version of that old game. And that's going to be available October 6th, 2023. And moving on from there, we see the biggest announcement of the show for me, the announcement of a remake of Super Mario RPG. This is absolutely one of my favorite games of all time. I play this game probably at least once a year. I currently have it on my Steam Deck, and it was literally the first thing I made sure I got running on my Steam Deck on an emulator. This is one of the best games that ever came out for Super Nintendo. Came out around 1996, if I'm not mistaken. So I was uh, 11 or 12 maybe when this came out. And they showed a lot off. And for someone who has played this game so many times, it was really awesome to see that every single moment of the game looks like it's going to be represented faithfully if not improved upon there's actually cutscenes. it looks like they've made some updates to the battle system but it's still the turn-based goodness that i remember from the original and of course it's going to have the goofy story involving mario taking out smithy the evil sword making monster boss machine thing and so he has to team up with bowser and princess peach and the frog named malo and of course our man gino who everybody loves and has wanted in smash forever probably the second most requested character in smash after sora the super mario rpg legend of the seven stars remake is out on november 17th 2023 and i highly recommend that if you are not someone who's played this you absolutely give this game a try even if you're not a fan of turn-based games this is actually one that not only has turn-based stuff but a lot of action and platforming because it is a mario title so check this one out this is at the a1 top of my list from everything that was shown here but that doesn't mean there isn't some great stuff coming up right after that we saw a princess peach game there was not a lot of info about this which is a couple shots and we kind of saw her change costumes or maybe transform something uh it looks great though just visually it's stunning just like all nintendo switch stuff their art style for the mario properties is just awesome so check this one out if you're a fan of princess peach and you want to see this it looks like it's probably going to be a side scrolling platformer kind of like in the style of mario but obviously peach has different movement historically in the franchise after that we see a remake of luigi's mansion dark moon this is a 3ds game that's getting a remake and that is just gonna leave me hoping that ocarina of time 3d and majora's mask 3d get updates for the switch as well as a link between world in the pokemon gen 5 6 and 7 hopefully we can see those move to the switch before we get the next switch and i hope the next switch is backward compatible because that would be all sorts of awesome after that we see that the arkham trilogy the batman arkham trilogy is coming to the switch this year and this is a huge w for switch players if you are a switch or a nintendo exclusive person it's very likely that the only batman arkham game you've ever played is arkham origins which was on the wii u i have that believe it or not and we're finally seeing arkham asylum arkham city and arkham knight coming to the switch my only concern with this is that arkham knight is quite hard to run so i kind of am interested in seeing how it's been optimized because if they optimized it well and it's got a solid performing port on the switch that would be pretty good because on the steam deck i have it on steam and on the steam deck it does not run very well i mean it runs you know 30 but it'll drop a little bit but let's say they get it to 30 fps on the switch and it's rock solid That'd be kind of an improvement and man if they can get it to 60 somehow i don't think they can because the ps4 couldn't even do that but it's been a long time since that game came out so maybe there have been some optimizations done either way if you haven't played these these batman games are some of the best superhero games that have ever been made i might say that spider-man could top them if this spider-man 2 that's coming out is very very good but batman arkham games are 
like I said earlier, legendary. These are coming out this fall, so make sure you keep your eyes on that. They kind of start to go rapid fire a little bit. We see it's a quick gameplay footage of Gloomhaven, which I believe they said is a tabletop adaptation that's been made for the Switch. This kind of looks cool. I might check this out depending, but I got a lot of stuff to play this year, especially in October, so. But that is coming out September 18th, 2023. And after that, we saw Just Dance 2024. What needs to be said about Just Dance other than you just dance to play it? Just Dance is a series that's been going on for like a decade, but obviously they're going to have new songs and new dance routines for people to learn and play through. So if you're a fan of that franchise, that will be out this fall like it normally is. Then we get one called A Silent Hope, and this one seems kind of weird to me, like it doesn't really know what it wants to be. It's got like a chibi art style, and it says it's an action RPG, but it also looks like it may be a roguelike kind of thing with some crafting and farming that they mention, right? You can go back to your base camp and take your materials and cultivate and craft and create new things. Uh, just kind of left confused as to exactly what this is. I'm going to keep my eyes on it because it could be interesting if it is like a roguelike ARPG. Cool. Like, I'll try it out. Why not? But uh, yeah, the other stuff, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how it all kind of melts together. But that'll be coming your way October 3rd. But then just like every Nintendo Direct, we get another farming simulator, Fay Farm. This is like a fairy farming thing. A uh, farming game. Yeah. Moving on. After that, we get Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbo Charge. This one is an arcade racer. Arcade racers are like the only racers I really enjoy. Uh, and even then, it's very few and far between. But this one kind of looks just chaotic enough that it might pique my interest a little bit enough to maybe check it out. And obviously, the Hot Wheels aesthetic kind of helps. It's kind of like how I feel about musicals. Like, I can't really take them seriously. But if it's in a movie, I'm cool. If it's like on a stage, it just feels awkward and weird to me. Here, the Hot Wheels backdrop kind of makes me go, okay, fun, silly, racer, arcadey, yeah, I could dig it. An added benefit of this is vehicle customization as well as track customization, and that's always fun being able to build tracks, especially if you can like share them with your friends. But that one's coming out October 19th. Then we see this little car fix-up game, Manic Mechanics. Uh, it's like four-player co-op. You can play with friends, have fun. I don't know who exactly a game like this is made for, but if you're someone who enjoys that, it's gonna be coming out July 13th. We then show the Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope DLC number two, The Last Spark Hunter. The Mario vs. Rabbids, I have heard Ubisoft say they kind of regret releasing it already. Uh, it's probably not doing too well, uh, but this DLC looks like it could be kind of fun. I mean, you know, the, the Mario vs. Rabbids games, everyone I, that I know that has played them enjoys them, but they're kind of the people who enjoy that kind of weird XCOM battlefield style strategy combat. But they said that launches later today, which by the time you're watching this will be yesterday. So you can pick that up now. If you do have Mario plus Rabbids, a spark of hope. Then we see Dragon Quest Monsters, the Dark Prince. Dragon Quest is just one of those franchises that not only has its mainline games, but has all these little offshoots and people love them. They keep buying them. Dragon Quest Monsters looks like another one of those. It's obviously similar to something like Pokemon, and I believe Dragon Quest Monsters as a spin-off franchise first came around around the same time as Pokemon, so it's been around quite a while. Dragon Quest Monsters will be out December 1st, 2023. We then get shots of Pikmin 4. This is Nintendo's next biggest release, I believe. I think this is coming out July 21st, 2023, and it looks like more Pikmin. There's obviously some new stuff that they show, but I think for longtime fans of the Pikmin franchise, you're going to be kind of right at home and hopefully it delivers. One of the things I really loved was getting the Pikmin to pick up the Game Boy Advance and then you bring it back to your ship. I assume you're taking it apart for parts, which is kind of a travesty when you think about it, but the Game Boy Advance SP definitely brings back some memories. And I think they're counting on the fact that, you know, people buying Pikmin 4 probably had the Game Boy Advance SP as one of their first consoles when they were a kid. We then see Metal Gear Solid The Collection. This is coming to the Nintendo Switch, which is very, very cool. Metal Gear Solid is one of those things that everybody asks for a collection for all the time. And now we're finally really seeing this coming out. I believe it's coming out for more consoles, but having it announced for the Switch as well, especially considering these are games that have been around for a long time, right? So I'm going back as far as the PlayStation and even the Nintendo itself. Metal Gear as a franchise has been around for a long time. So getting to see this and kind of having it return to its roots, going back to Nintendo console is very, very cool. And the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 is going to be available October 24th, 2023. That leads me to assume they're going to have more volumes with different games later on down the line, which I think is 
is going to be fantastic. After Metal Gear Solid, we see Vampire Survivors. This was a hit game last year, one of the big wins for Xbox last year, and it's on mobile as well as a free to play, but I definitely recommend if this costs as much as it does, say on Steam, that you just buy a copy for your Switch because Vampire Survivors is a game that is going to give you hours and hours and hours of fun. And for me on Steam, I paid about five bucks for it with the DLC. And if it costs that much on the Switch, even if it costs 10 bucks, I would absolutely say that's worth it. Vampire Survivors is a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun. It seems really simple. It's really simple to pick up and kind of play a little bit. It's also really simple to kind of learn, but then you understand that it gets more and more involved the further you go into it. So definitely check this one out if you haven't heard of it. Vampire Survivor is absolutely worth five bucks. And one of the really big things about the Switch is gonna also feature four player local co-op. So that's gonna be something really fun for you and your friends to do together. Vampire Survivors is a great time. It's gonna be available August 17th. We then see Headbangers Rhythm Royale. This is kind of a weird take on the Battle Royale genre. It's like a rhythm game and you play as a pigeon dressed up as something. And I guess you try and just kind of keep the rhythm and last person keeping the rhythm wins and i think this seems like it could be fun uh if they get to charge like 60 dollars for it i don't know about that but if this is like a 15 maybe 20 dollar title that you can get on the eShop and it's just something you throw on and play a game or two every once in a while i absolutely think that this could be something to check out and that'll be out october 31st a halloween for those of you who want to live in the spooky season playing a rhythm battle royale we then see Penny's Big Breakaway. This is from the team that made Sonic Mania, and this looks like a really great little platform game. Uh, I might check this out down the road. It's very cute, very colorful, and I love that in a platformer. Right? That's why I like Mario. That's why I like the Sackboy game. Right? If you give me a cute and colorful platformer, I will probably make my way through it. I think those are a lot of fun. And that's one of those things that just takes me back to the root of me playing video games, playing Mario way back in the day. And Penny's Big Breakaway doesn't have a specific release date yet, but they do say it's going to be available early 2024. Then we see some of the new characters and courses coming to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, right? This is part of the booster pack that I think we're all still paying for with our Nintendo Switch Online subscription if you have the expansion pass. Are they going to have Comic, uh, PD Piranha, and I forget the other characters, but yeah it's gonna be really cool there's gonna be some classic courses again it's just more mario kart 8 deluxe more bang for your buck on that game that game is never gonna die they're just gonna keep it going forever and i guess people keep buying it so why not but you won't have to wait too long for these courses because it does say it's going to be coming in summer 2023 which is literally right around the corner and as things start to wind down we see star ocean the second story r this game looks beautiful it's got that kind of hd 2.5 3D-ish kind of thing. It's another Square Enix title, and Square has been really great about this with the like Octopad Traveler. Those games, a lot of people go like, oh, well, they're just pixel art. And I'm like, man, they're they're beautiful. They're very stylized. And it looks like this Star Ocean, the second story R game is gonna be the same kind of way. It's gonna be very pixelated, but the environments, like they're 3D, but they feel kind of matte painted or something. I don't know how to describe it. It's like 2.5 3D something but the characters are very traditional like pixel sprites and it looks fantastic and when they show off combat it does look like it's going to be kind of traditional turn-based stuff but they say it is all in real time and it's got like a break system kind of like octopath traveler had you can have members that aren't in your active party come in and help out your party which i think is awesome square enix is doing really really cool things with like traditional rpg systems and really kind of adding these curveballs to them that makes me just like love these new games like octopath traveler is some of my favorite combat for a turn-based game that i've played with in a number of years but star ocean the second story r is going to be available november 2nd so keep your eyes on that if you're a jrpg fan because this one looks like it could be really special and then we move right along to warioware move it warioware is like insane fun i remember uh some friends and i went to vegas and in the room, we just had a bunch of drinks and we played WarioWare for like two hours. One of the days that we were there, just in the middle of the day, and it was a lot of fun. It was just this chaotic, crazy mess of a game. And now they're adding in like movement controls and things like that, which means it's just gonna get more and more chaotic. This is a fun party game, WarioWare. So make sure if you're a fan of WarioWare and you like to have that available for you and your friends to play whenever you're bored and you've got people over, make sure you pick up WarioWare and move it because this looks like, again, a ton of fun, especially with a group of people. 
Nintendo then talked about Nintendo Live 2023 with some events they're going to be putting on. But you're not here for that. You're here for the games and stuff like that. Next up, they showed Amiibo figures for Zelda and Ganondorf from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm absolutely going to get the Zelda one. I love the game. I love Zelda, right? So Tears of the Kingdom right now is my game of the year. And I think that having these Amiibo to add to my collection is something that I just need to do, you know, for my personal well-being. If you like them, they're going to be there. They're going to be around in the holidays, they said. So we're going to have to wait a while, but hopefully we see some DLC announcement too, because I would just love more Tears of the Kingdom and another reason to go back and play my save file with all my stuff on it. And finally, the show closes out with Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and this game looks incredible. Seeing a new Super Mario Brothers 2D side-scrolling game that's not part of the new line, as a lot of people have commented today I've seen, is really refreshing. This is a brand new Super Mario Brothers game. There's going to be crazy new power-ups. Uh, I love the elephant. You've probably seen that. I think I'm going to have them put that on the thumbnail because that's been kind of the meme today. But all of this looks incredible. You get to have all these different power-ups and the whole world changes around Mario or whoever your character you're playing is. And man, I tell you, I'm really glad I saved my uh, voucher, my second voucher after I bought Tears of the Kingdom from the eShop vouchers because it's absolutely going to Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I'm going to just pre-order it with that probably after I get off of recording this video. But this game is, if you're an old school side-scrolling Mario fan, this one is going to be for you. Or even if you're a fan of the new series games like we talked about and you wanted something a little different, this really looks like it's going to be something that lives up to the Nintendo pedigree for Mario. And that's really all we ever want to see in a mainline Mario game is that Mario is treated with that reverence and respect because he is probably the OG for everybody who plays video games. So, but that wraps it up for me. This Nintendo Direct was like an A+. I do not think they could have knocked it out of the park. Maybe if they were like, hey, by the way, we're bringing Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, and uh, Twilight Princess to Switch, then I'd be like, okay, this is A++, like S plus tier. Aside from that, I can't think of any way they could have made this better. I know Lethal would be like, hey, what about Metroid Prime 4? And Talon will probably say the same thing. He said something about Metroid Prime 2. He's like, I, I hope they have that today. I knew they weren't going to do Metroid Prime 2 because they just released Metroid Prime, you know, remaster like five or six months ago. So, uh, yeah, they're probably going to be waiting a little bit longer for that. But for me, this was like an awesome, awesome Nintendo Direct. Super Mario RPG, one of my top three games of all time, coming back in a full remake that looks gorgeous. Seeing a brand new 2D Mario game coming, more WarioWare, that Penny's Big Breakaway, really interesting. Vampire Survivors on another platform that I'm gonna buy that game again. Silent Hope again, could be interesting. Having Batman Arkham Trilogy on the Switch is a W and a half, a new Princess Peach game, a new Detective Pikachu game, Persona 5, a brand new Sonic side-scroller, and then of course some Pokemon DLC and some farm sims as we always see in these Switch presentations. But let me know down in the comments below, what did you think of this? Because personally, man, I, I absolutely love Mario RPG coming back. I immediately after that, as soon as the pre-orders went up, I pre-ordered the physical copy from Best Buy, so I'm gonna have that, and I'm gonna have Super Mario Wonder as a digital because I've got that eShop voucher. Probably gonna pick up the other stuff that I mentioned too, but I might wait for things like Batman Arkham Trilogy because obviously that'll go down in price at some point and I have those games on a Steam Deck already. So, you know, the Amiibos as well, everything. But again, I'm Little Bobby here with 5 Nine Gaming Direct and I'm so happy we could go over this Nintendo Direct for June 2023 with you guys today. Very, very awesome, very, very cool presentation and Nintendo like, best of show like xbox i thought had a great show but man nintendo like killed it for me personally like i think this is the best show that we had all june but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below thank you again so much for watching we hope to see you soon here and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you stayed this long and hit the dislike if you didn't like this video let us know in the comments either way down below what we can do to improve for next time again thanks i'm little bobby here thank you guys for watching i hope to see you soon